Hey everyone, so today I just wanted to talk about two things that have recently happened. One, I went to see a psychologist and two, my third treatment of chemo got delayed. Annoying. So on Monday I went to see a psychologist. I, since I'm a young person, uh, where I live and in Australia there's a organization uh, or service called Youth Cancer Service. So they're a little team of people who uh, really reach out to young people who are going through cancer. I think they have to be under 25. And they just give you extra support and the service is really designed to be helping young people. And part of that team is a psychologist and the team organizes for you to go see her early on in the treatment. So that way they can gauge whether or not you need more psychological help or help dealing uh, or coping with certain things in your life and the way that cancer is affecting them. Even though I would have had control over having the appointment or not, they really pushed to have the appointment even if it was just once, to have an assessment to see how I'm going. I was all fine for it to go through. I'm a psychology student so I know how important it is to be on top of your mental health and how seemingly small things can really help us day to day and a lot of them can be psychological exercises or ways of thinking. But even though this is a very difficult time for myself, I didn't feel like I really needed to go to a psychologist. I felt like I was coping as well as I could. In addition to that, even being a psychology student, I, you still have this kind of stigma associated with seeing a psychologist. You think, oh my god, like, am I not coping well? Like, am I going crazy? You have all these thoughts that are negative, and it's really unfortunate that in society we have these kind of negative thoughts when we go see a psych or that we think that we must be so bad before we go see a psych and, and that's not true even if you're doing really well I think it's important to go see a psychologist even to get that validation that yes it seems like you're coping pretty well with the world they can still give you ways of coping or little exercises that help you even when you're doing well because everyone even those who are doing well will still have their ups and downs and so I went to the appointment even though I got a little bit anxious about it <laughs> Um, because I've studied the process, I might end up being a psychologist one day, but I've never been the patient, and being the patient is still a scary position to be in. You end up being vulnerable, and you have to talk a lot about yourself. And I went to see her, and she just more or less just probed in different parts of my life, how I'm coping with um, my health, and how am I dealing with the chemotherapy, and how things are at home, and with my friends, and with my partner, and just different aspects of life to kind of see um, whether or not there are... Uh, if there are any kind of problem areas or places where there's a lot of conflict and ways that she can help me. Other things she asked about was about how I deal with needles and also helping me make sure that I don't get things like anticipate, anticipatory, anticipatory, anticipatory nausea. I can't say it properly. I'll write it down here. And that's the kind of nausea that you get where you are anticipating going to chemo and then you get nauseous just thinking about the chemo. And that's happens when you get nauseous after having chemo and so the idea is to try and take your nausea medication as much as you can so that way you don't get the nausea to start with so that way you shouldn't be getting any kind of anticipatory nausea and with the needles thing I told her that you know I don't like noodle I don't like noodles I love noodles I don't like needles but I tolerate them. I kind of just talk myself through. I let them do their stabbing different parts of my body um, if they need blood or whatever and I just kind of get through it. But I definitely don't like them, but I don't need help with needles. And there were other things that she asked about, but that was kind of the overall gist, and I found the experience to be very good and very helpful, even though at the end of it, we kind of both agreed that, and I said that I don't think I need to continue going to see her at the moment, but I will definitely reach out when I feel like I'm starting to slip. Because when I'm in my horrible chemo days, I feel my mind slipping so fast. And I think that's naturally a product of if your body feels so bad and you feel so horrible, it's very difficult to keep your mood up. It's just, it's nearly impossible. But when I am feeling better, I am able to pick myself up. And I think that's probably the difference. When I'm not able to pick myself up as my body in improves, then I think that's when I will go back to her or maybe after this whole chemo process, I might need to see her a lot. Maybe that adjusting period um, it might become very difficult for me. And I just wanted to talk about this experience because if there are any of you out there who are thinking about seeing a psychologist, I would really recommend doing it, even if it's just to make sure that you are coping okay. I know in different parts of the world, it can be very expensive to see a psychologist, but if there is a way that you can go see a free psychologist or counsellor as well, then I would really recommend that you do it. And I just want to really be open about my experience because I know that we can start having these little negative thoughts or just thoughts about, oh, I don't really want to see a psychologist, I'm doing fine, even if we're not. And at the end of the day, it's just about taking care of you. 
and we are hopefully all taking care of our physical health the best that we can but you also need to take care of our mind and this is a chemotherapy and cancer is very difficult on the mind and the way that we think about things and the way that we can sometimes approach life so I would just really recommend and encourage all of you to see a psych or counsellor if it's accessible to you and affordable and for those where they can't see a psychologist or counsellor because of either money or they can't get there or it's just not possible then I would definitely recommend to keep staying on support forums or you know I'd be happy to keep interacting and chatting to um, all of you because we definitely need that support but obviously a psychologist or counsellor are trained and they're anonymous and that's their job they're meant to help you whereas I am just a random person who cares about you which is nice but I don't have necessarily the same skills but people can help each other immensely and the second thing I want to talk about and I won't talk about it for very long uh, just that my third treatment got delayed again so that's really frustrating it's my second delay it's not as long of a delay, it's not a full week, it's five days. I'm having, I think, probably my chemo's when I start on Tuesdays fortnightly instead of Thursdays fortnightly. And they've changed my peg new luster needle thing. Now, instead of getting that one injection, I think it's of six milligrams, which is a big boost. And my body really reacted really well to it. I had really, really high neutrophils. But then, just before my next chemo, they just dipped and... They were too low and it's probably because I was sick and I'm still recovering. So now I'm on a new new luster needle. It's 300 micrograms, so it's a much lower dosage, but I have to take three of them. And I took one on Thursday, I take one tonight, and then I take one on Monday, and then my chemo's on Tuesday. And then I have to time it next time in a certain way to make sure that my neutrophils always stay up. So I'll be taking them, I'm pretty sure, every two weeks. So that's just changed. Now I just have a different needle. They changed my needle because I think for one, uh, the other needle kind of dipped too low and so it's probably better to be consistently every two weeks preparing myself for every chemo session instead of having one major one to hold me over two chemo sessions. And also I had pretty bad po bone pain with a new Lasta. It wasn't horrible, I could kind of get through it, but they said, well, there's this option where we reduce the dosage and kind of like stagger it, which helps a lot of people with bone pain. It's just that you have to go through more needles. And I was like, well, it's okay, it's just in my stomach. And it's a bit painful, yes, but I prefer that than having the bone pain and also making sure that I can meet every chemo treatment. No more delays. And if for some reason I have bad bone pain with this needle or with this, new regime then you can actually go down to 120 micrograms I think it is but you have to take the needle five days in a row so hmm, I'd prefer less needles and I'd prefer less bone pain so I think hopefully this is the happy medium so if any of you are experiencing bad bone pain with your new Lasta then talk to your doctor about um, either getting the 300 microgram or the 120 microgram needles it's just that you will have to get more of them but for some people it's you know worse going through a bit of extra needle scary pain whatever instead of going through the bone pain that kind of really sticks around so hopefully no more delays new needle I want to see a psych and I'm just gonna try to enjoy these days where I'm feeling pretty good I'm not feeling 100% I'm still very light sensitive I feel like I'm forgetting things all the time I keep misplacing my phone which I hate I really 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 hate it I love my mind that it was so sharp and I remembered everything and now I just can't remember things which is really infuriating but I'm doing good I'm doing good so please share your experiences or what's been happening with you down below and I'll see you all soon. Bye.